Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. To judge or not to judge of all the verses in the Bible, the verse that people know most is the verses we read here. The first verse, in fact, judge not lest you be judged. And people will often say that to try to keep you away from judging them. And they'll say that, and um, it's not what you think it means. It's not this passage is used and abused and misunderstood and misinterpreted uh, the whole world over. And we're going to talk a little bit this morning about what Jesus meant when he says, Judge not, lest ye be judged. So let's read those verses, verses 1 through 6. Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with the, me- with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice the log that is in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Well, let's pray. Father, we pray for your wisdom. And as we look at your word this morning, I pray you'll inform us of what you're meaning. And Lord, I pray you help us to know how to live our lives as we approach this idea of judging others. And I pray, Lord, you'll help us to uh, be the kind of people you called us to be uh, in this world and in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing us with your spirit and for enabling our understanding this morning. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So there are five points I want to share with you out of this. And the first one begins, the first point I want you to notice is, how do you obey verse 6 if you don't judge? Look at verse 6. Jesus says, do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Jesus is actually referring to people, is he not? When he talks about swine and dogs, he says, don't give your pearls to them or they're going to rend you and attack you. A few few weeks ago, I want to temper a statement I've made. I talk about living openly as a Christian in front of lost people. Now, we should do that boldly. But Jesus actually is telling us here that we need to be discerning how we live in front of people. Who we trust our pearls to. Our pearls, I don't know about you, but my pearls would be the, my testimony of how I came to Jesus. A pearl for me would be Jesus himself. And Jesus is telling us, be careful. And you know, somebody out there, some dog or some swine, if you begin to share something that's precious to you, they might take and start laughing. <laughs> right? And they will, like pigs and uh, dogs, will rend your pearls worthless. They'll treat it like garbage. So how do you discern what a swine is and what a dog is when we're talking about people without judging? We have to be able to be discerning in judging other people to see if they're dogs or swine. And the reason why many of us don't witness to certain people is we know that when we get to share Christ with them, they're, going, they're not going to receive it and they're not going to mock and laugh at us. And Jesus tells us when you discern that, don't share with them. Don't give them your pearls or they'll ta- or attack you. Okay? He also says in the next, in, in later on in chapter 7, he talks about you can tell a tree by its fruit. Right? If you've got bad fruit on a tree, we had an t- apple tree out the back of the parsonage years ago. It was an apple tree, and it grew, and the apples were always bad. They, they were wormy and rotten. So when you see a rotten app, rot, a bunch of rat, rotten apples on a tree, what do you conclude? That the tree is rotten. It's a bad tree. So what do we do? We cut it. We cut it down. Bob Wade cut it down. I, I was kind of afraid he would he would hit himself, but he did it okay. Right. Uh, so he cut it down. And see, that's what Jesus is saying. You look at the fruit on the tree. If the fruit's bad, 
then you can conclude that the tree is bad. What's this called? That's called judging. We are just, how can you do that without judging? So there is a certain amount of judging that we must do. It's important to all of life. As thinking human beings, you and I, we judge all the time. You go to a restaurant, you're going to judge the quality of the food. Have you ever been to a, a restaurant, went to the bathroom, it was dirty, filthy? And you, I mean, you judge those things, you discern those things. We have people who, uh, who are in, a, in the Olympics. We got people called judges to see if they did a good job or if they did a bad job. We all have employers that judge us on the performance of our work. But somehow we think this, as a Christian, we are never to judge. We're not to discern anything at all. We're to live our lives blindly following everybody what they say. And we've got to believe everything and all that kind of things without discerning. And that's not what Jesus is teaching here. If you take the Bibles to 1 Corinthians, I want you to see something. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I want to show you something. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this life? So I'll stop right there. I mean, we could go any further, but, but, but Paul's telling us that we as Christians, we need to be able to be discerning and judging, discerning situations, even disputes among people. We need to have some kind of wisdom with regards to that. And so when Jesus tells us not to cast our pearls before swine and dogs, we are to discern who are dogs and swines, who we can trust. We're also to discern when he talks about the fruit. Under, he's really talking about leaders, right? You can tell a tree by its fruit. You can discern whether a leader's good or if they're bad. We need to be discerning. So when Jesus says, judge not, he's not speaking about this kind of thing. So let's look at what he says. So let's, what is he saying? Second point here. So then, how do you obey verse 6? You can't obey verse 6 if you don't judge. But second, the second point I want you to note is, I cannot examine someone else until I have fully examined myself. He talks about the speck. How can you, how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there's a log in your own eye. We can see the imagery. You got a guy who has a speck of sawdust in her eye. And then you got another person who has a log in their eye. Jesus is using hyperbole, right? A big, a, a, an image to, to over-exaggerate his point. You've got a person over here, he's got a bigger problem. He's got this log in his eye. He has this huge problem. But he's going to help this guy with this small problem. This is disgusting. Silly. By the way, if somebody comes to me and I've got a speck of sawdust in my eye and they got a log in their eye, I'm not going to trust them to help me with my eye because he can't see. I'm like, wait, 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 wait a minute. What are you doing? Get, because everybody knows here it is this person is trying to tell me what to do, but he's got bigger problems in his own life. See, there's, there's a thing, there's, there's this, this mantra that people have don't do as I do, do as I say. And Jesus isn't saying that. He says, we need to do as, you need to do as I do, and as I say. I can't help you, and you can't help me, unless we, we take care of ourselves first. And that's what Jesus is teaching. We've got to examine ourselves before we can help anybody else. Because if we don't, then we're not going to be able to see clearly to help anybody else. There's the irony of those realities. And this was what was going on in Jesus' day. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were blind to their own problems. Because they were busy looking at everybody else's problems, they're blind to their own problems. 
And that's what's going on. See, everybody else is going to say, don't judge me, don't judge me, but I'll judge you. I'll tell you what to think. I'll tell you what to do, but don't judge me. I'm not going to judge myself. I'm not going to examine myself. Once I am humble to help myself, then I am qualified to help somebody else. The greatest contributor I can make toward the reformation of my neighbor is the reformation of myself. If I'm, commi- if I'm hungry and thirsty for righteousness, I'm going to be hungry and thirsty for it, not just for my neighbor, but I'm going to be definitely hungry and thirsty for it for me. Because I can be the biggest liar, I can be the biggest murderer, I can be the biggest whatever, more than my neighbor, but I need help. And I'm praying for God to help me with those things. And then I can tell my neighbor, this is how God helped me. He can help you too. You see how it goes? But we can't sit there and ignore our own problems and focus on the problems of other people. And that's what Jesus is saying. When we judge, we've got to judge ourselves. We have to examine ourselves. But when we judge ourselves, I want want to point out something to you. We must use righteous judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Use righteous judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 3 through 5. We've got to use righteous judgment. You know, we can judge ourselves about stupid things. We have, you know, we have these silly standards that we have that we try to attain to, and we, and we judge ourselves over those things, and then we neglect the things that God may want us to think think worry about, right? Look at verse, chapter 4, verse 3 through 5. But with me, Paul is speaking, but with me in this very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I am not aware of anything against myself, but I'm not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time. Before the Lord comes, will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purpose of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. Paul is saying, when we judge, we must use righteous judgment. But he says, you can't judge me by your standards. He says, I don't even judge myself, because my standards might be totally wrong. And this is what was going on in Jesus' day. You have the Pharisees and Sadducees. They were doing what they thought was right in their, you know, they, they wore the phylacteries. They had the tassels. They washed their hands with the proper traditional washing that they did. And they said, well, I'm doing pretty good. Hey, I'm pretty righteous. And they would give in front of everybody lots of money. And they, they would do all these things. They would pray these great long prayers. And they were impressing God and doing all these things. They were fasting. Everybody saw how bad it was on them. All these external things. And they said, we must be okay with God. This is how we judge. In fact, God was judging him and saying, you're not good. You're not good at all. So we can have some kind of human standard up here, and we can meet that human standard, but we're not meeting God's standard at all. Jesus says, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and Sadducees, you will not enter into heaven. And what Jesus is saying is man's standard is not God's standard. If we try to achieve man's standard... We're going to fall woefully short of God's standard every single time. In fact, this is what Paul's saying. Paul is saying, I know that I'm going to fall short of God's standard every time. I'm not good enough. I judge myself, but yet I know that even if I thought I was good because I do this thing right or that thing right, if I'm trusting in those things, I know it's going to fail me. Ultimately, we have to trust in Christ. We have to place our faith in him. God is judge. That's what Paul is saying. He doesn't even judge himself. The standards are God's standards, not man's standards. And when we start judging other people, we forget who the judge is. And I'm not going to go there yet, because we're going to come back to it. 
So when we examine ourselves, make sure we examine ourselves with righteous judgment. You might think you're too skinny, too fat, too ugly, too pretty. That's all silly stuff, man standards. Use righteous judgment. Use the judgment of God. And that's important because today we're going to do that, right? When we have the Lord's Supper, we, we tell people to examine themselves. And we give three, three reasons, three things we look at, but, but we must use righteous judgment. Anyway. Now I'm going to go to the third one, boomerang judgment. Let's call it the boomerang judgment. Jesus talks about this, and this is an interesting point. Boomerang judgment. You know a boomerang, when you throw a boomerang, I've, I've tried throwing one, and it, you have to have a, law, a pretty big space to do this for it to come back. It takes a lot of space. But you throw that boomerang, and it comes back, doesn't it? Or supposedly it comes back. And this is, what, this is the point he's going to say. Verse 2. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. If you want someone to cut you some slack, then you need to cut someone some slack, right? If you want to be shown mercy, then you show mercy. What people usually want, they want people to show them grace and mercy, but they don't want to show anybody else any grace and mercy. It's, from God's perspective, it must look pretty silly. you got somebody else that they want God to be merciful to them, but yet they're not going to show any mercy to anybody else. And this Jesus is cutting through this. If you're going, to, you're going to judge somebody for something, it's going to be judged to you. God is going to bring it back on you. There's that idea, remember that, that statement, because what goes around comes around. And this is what Jesus is telling. If I'm judging someone else, if I'm... Doing this way towards someone else, God is going to make sure it's going to come back around to me. Me and my, uh, my cousin Brad, and I think I've shared this, we used to get in fights, very few, very, very few, uh, but we did. And one time we got in a fight and we were, I grabbed her, his hair. Well, what did he do? He grabbed my hair. And I'm sitting there, I grab it harder, and he grabs mine harder. Ugh, I grab it even harder. He grabs mine even harder. And finally, I get in my mind, oh, if I want to let him go, if I want him to let me go, I better let him go. So I s slowly released, and he released, and I let go, and he let go. Okay, well, we won't go there. We won't go into hair, hair point. But so that's the point. When I'm pulling someone else's hair, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt me. It's going to come back on me. And that's what Jesus is saying. There's a show. <laughs> there's a show I kind of like. I probably shouldn't. But it's called My Name is Earl. Anybody ever watch that show? Oh, okay. Okay, good. <laughs> this show is really funny. I really like it. I mean, it's funny because the guy, his name's Earl. He's so goofy. He's got a brother. But the whole premise of the show, it actually, there's this concept called karma. Karma is actually, it's a, it's a Hindu concept. It's from Hinduism, okay? But we've Americanized it, and so it doesn't bear much resemblance. So basically... Earl, when he grew up, he was kind of a bad kid, and he played dirty tricks on people and all this kind of stuff. He and his brother did, and one day he got hit by a car, almost died, and he came to his realization, wait a minute, this is happening because I've done all these bad things. So Earl makes this list with his brother. He, they go through this big list of things they've wronged people. So every episode, he's, he's going to this person he wronged, and he's going to them and apologizing and seeing what he can do to make it right. Okay, that, that's, that's the whole show. That's the premise of the whole show. And uh, Earl goes around to undo, undo this karma, undo his judgment. And then every time he does something good, something good happens to him. <laughs> it's this boomerang effect. And I remember there's one episode that's really, really good. Um, there was one episode he goes to this, this person, and somebody died because of what he did. And there was no... There was no getting out of it, okay? He was talking to that person, and he realizes there's nothing he could do to help that person. So he finally came to that point. He said, well, the only thing we can do is ask you to forgive me. Can you just forgive me? And she said, yes. And it did release. I, was, I thought it was, I was a good teaching on forgiveness. What they want, they want God to be good to them, but they don't want to be good to anybody else. And that's, that's the point. When Jesus says, judge not, lest ye be not judged. 
Jesus said, we, if we're constantly condemning other people, we're constantly judging other people, Jesus is saying it's going to be heaped back upon us. Think about that. Now, I, I don't know how that works with salvation by grace and all that. I, I don't know how, but I know what Jesus is saying. If you want people to stop pulling your hair, <laughs> stop pulling theirs. Let go. And let God be the judge. Let God do it. James 2, verse 12 through 13 says, So speak and act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. The reason why we're able to show grace to other people is because we know we're going to be shown great grace by God. In fact, we've been shown great grace by God. I remember the... Uh, um, one of the preachers, Jonathan Edwards, he was up at a place, he was preaching, this was back in the, back in the day, okay, 1600s. He was preaching, and everybody in the church was just really upset. They were, God was really working with them, and they were burdened down with their sins of guilt. And one guy after, after the service came up to Jonathan Edwards, I am such a sinner, I'm such a vile sinner. And Jonathan Edwards says, you don't know me yet. I am just as bad a one as you really need mercy the same as you. So we're all in the same boat. We all need mercy. We've all been shown great mercy. And so that, that we have no authority really to stand and judge someone else. So Jesus, when he says, judge not lest you be judged, is based on this principle. But I want to point out one last point this morning. God is still going to judge people. He still has his set of standards. I can't just say, uh, I just can't, I can't just kill somebody one day and then, and then show mercy to someone else and think God's going to let, let me go. <laughs> I still need his forgiveness. God still has his standards. And Romans 14, 10 through 12 says, we will all give an account to our lives here on earth. We will all have to give an account to God of how we live. It's to Him. Nobody else is my judge, but God is my judge. And I live in the aware, we need to live in the awareness of what He thinks. And I know that on that day, God will show me great mercy when I've shown mercy to other people. Now, I know I'm saved by Jesus, by His grace, but we're talking about rewards or lack of rewards on that judgment day. God will judge us all. There's a lot of matters of opinion that God won't, uh, that, that will come back on us if we make it the issue. Matters of opinion. Um, I had a good friend, my best friend in Bible college, Scott. He was constantly doubting other people's salvation. Constantly. Uh, I remember we would go someplace, and I remember one time we were, we were together. We'd go out witnessing to people at, at, uh, uh, at restaurant parking lots, and one day we were out witnessing, we were sharing Christ with people, and then we went someplace else, and, and in transit, I heard a song, we were listening to a song, and it was a secular song, and I started humming it, and he was, thought I was lost, he thought I wasn't saved, because I was humming a secular song, uh, Van a Van Halen song, okay, <laughs> he thought I was lost because of that, but it's interesting, because Scott was always questioning his own salvation, Always struggled with that. I was always trying to talk about, you know, you, you, by faith you have to trust Christ, you have to believe on Him, you have to repent. And he thought about doing something, he thought he was guilty and all this kind of thing. And uh, it's interesting because as he was beginning to judge people like that, it was coming back on him. He felt trapped until finally one day he let it go. God, I guess they're in your hands. I am in your hands too, and I rely upon you. I know that because my friend Scott, he died. He was 22 years old, and he was one of them stupid people that drove recklessly all the time. And he drove, and he uh, missed a car, going through an intersection. He missed a car, and to swerve around that car, he hit a, hit a telephone pole, and he died. And I taught him, I taught him that uh, if you don't feel like your prayers are getting to heaven, write out your prayers. Write them out. And uh, at the funeral, they read, they read his prayer, because evidently he must have felt like God wasn't hearing his prayer. 
And he said, God, in his prayer, he said something to the effect, God, I'm all worried about this, I'm worried about that, but you know what? I trust you just the same. In his note, and that kind of, I knew what was going on. Scott finally trusted, finally trusted God and gave it up before he died. God is our judge. He has the authority to judge us. He's the one that we need to concern ourselves most with. Not our peers, not our friends, not our co-workers, not our government, not anything. It's God. God, Jesus said, Jesus, do not fear the one who can take your, your body, but fear the one who can take both body and soul and cast it into hell. God is our judge. We've got to be concerned about what he thinks. The world can think and it can applaud us, and everybody else can applaud us, but if it's not his standard, if God doesn't judge rightly, then, I mean, if he, he's going to judge us, if it's what he says that matters. Remember Moses? Remember the story of Moses? Uh, God told Moses, says, I want you to speak to the rock in order to get water to come out of it. What did Moses do? Instead of speaking to the rock, he struck it with his staff. Everybody could see. Struck it with these. Disobey, disobey God. So what did God do? God said, okay, Moses, because you disobeyed me, you will not enter into the promised land. You will die here in the wilderness. Now, no one in that camp, no one, no one of the Israelites knew that Moses disobeyed God, but Moses and God. Right? That's it. But Moses struck the rock because he wanted all the people to see it. God said, I want you to obey me, not make a show for all the people. And it cost him. Now, eventually, he did go into the promised land because he was there with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, but, but God is still the judge. So Jesus is saying, in essence, here, don't judge other people. Judge not because it's going to come back on you, but we are to use discernment when we're, when we're so we can, casting our pearls before swine. But know that God is the ultimate judge and live your life accordingly, knowing who sets the standards. If God has cleansed somebody, they're clean. If God doesn't clean somebody, they're not clean. And judge your own life by his standards, not by our own standards, by human standards. Okay? So what does God judge? How does God see you? Can I ask you that question this morning? When you think about what God thinks when he looks at you, what do you think? How does God view me? How does he see me? And if your mind doesn't go to Jesus and what he has done for you on the cross, your answer is going to be wrong. Because of what Jesus has done on the cross, he died upon the cross for my sins, it's made me accepted in the beloved. I am made acceptable by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And I am depending on that. I'm trusting and having faith in that. And I rejoice in that. I rejoice in what he's done for me. But, like many people, and there are many people are depending on their, their own standards, like the Pharisees. Now, I wear a suit this morning because I, I this is Lord's Supper Sunday. I like to dress up for Lord's Supper Sunday. I don't know. I just do. Uh, but you know what? God isn't going to accept me more because I'm wearing a suit or less, right? God accepts me because, not because I'm clothed in a suit, but because I'm clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't see me. He sees Jesus. That's why we have the Lord's Supper, because that's the covenant. That's the new agreement. God doesn't see me and my sin. He sees Christ in his righteousness. And we're clothed in his righteousness, his majesty. So to judge or not to judge, if God was to judge you right now, how would you plead? Guilty or not guilty? And see, that's the problem of the Israelites. They were dumbing it down. They were dumbing the standards down so they can humanly achieve it. But God says, don't dumb my standards down. Because what's going to happen is you're going to try to do it in your own self-effort. I, I want you to get beyond yourself. I want you to know that you're a liar. I want you to know you're a thief. I want you to know that you murder. I want you to know that you blaspheme my name. I want you to know you're a blasphemer. Because I want you to know that my grace is sufficient. 
I want you to call upon me to save you. I want to give you salvation, even though you deserve to die and go to hell forever. I want to give you eternal life. By your works, we are condemned. By our works, we're condemned. But by God's works, we shall receive grace and mercy and forgiveness. So what about you this morning? How does God judge? Is, are you in Christ this morning? Have you trusted Christ? So we're going to have an invitation. It's going to be a short invitation this morning. I'm going to ask you, if you've never asked Christ, you're not trusting in Jesus. You've not turned from your sin to turn to him and embraced him. This morning I'm going to ask you to do that. I'm going to ask you to trust him. Not dumb, down, not dumb it down. Say, well, you know, I've, I remember I had people ask, answer me this one time. I said, uh, they, they answered me, they told me, well, my daughter taught vacation Bible school. I think I'm okay. I think I did something right, you know. Well, that's not God's standard. <laughs> people hold on to things and try to dumb down what he says. Instead of saying, God, I, I'm a sinner, forgive me. I confess that. Maybe this morning you need to do that. Whatever the need is, as we, as we, as we sing, let's pray.